Jesus is he man or God? Christians seem not to agree on this. Um, and you, you begin to see several theories, several arguments, counter arguments about the deity of Jesus. One school of thought says he's just a special man. One that school of thought says he's just a man like I am only that it was on a message from God. Uh, another school of thought says is God in the flesh. So, who is Jesus? There are several ways to answer that, such that no single teaching can exhaustively answer this in the light of scriptures. Um, so, what I'm going to do here is to establish some foundations and then using that foundations from the Bible to establish this everlasting truth of the deity of Jesus. Then I'm not going to pay attention to handling arguments around the deity of Jesus, you know, several funny arguments going around. That's not what this video is focused on doing but I will touch on a few I'll touch on a few uh, sorry I'm using this this is not a controlled environment I just had to do this now so just permit me the lighting is poor there might be noise and all that okay first let me start by letting you understand that when Jesus was alive Jesus did not speak English okay, Jesus spoke Aramaic that was the language that was obtainable when he was alive. Talita Kumi is Aramaic. Okay. Ifata is Aramaic. Ili Ili Lamak Saktabani is Aramaic. Aramaic is a derivative of Hebrew, a language that the Israelites picked up under the Chaldeans uh, when they were taking slaves. Okay. So now what does the Aramaic Bible say? as per John 8 58 uh, where the general English Bible tells you what Jesus said was before Abraham was I am right let's look at the Aramaic English Bible or the Aramaic Bible in plain English let's look at that version what Jesus actually said was before Abraham was I am the living God that's what Jesus said before Abraham was, I am the living God. Now, um, even if you look at other versions, several versions says before Abraham was, I am. I am was in capital. And you know, only one person bears the name, I am. All right? So, um, you must understand that this is why the KJV version uses the capital letter S and small letter O-N for Jesus and Jesus alone throughout scriptures. The word son is not the English definition for son that you have, meaning a product of a man who is called a father. No. The word son there actually means God himself incarnated as a man. Whereas for everyone, believers in Christ, you have the small letter S-O-N in the Gospels. For us, meaning we are God reincarnated. And you see, the reason why we label so much, to teach so much, is because if you ignore any of the things I have taught, for instance, you will have problems with the others. There's this argument that is going around now that, um, so God became man to commit suicide on the cross, blah, blah, blah. It is because simple things are not understood. Before I go into that, John chapter 10, verse 33. When Jesus was speaking, even if you read your English Bible, the Pharisees picked up stones and wanted to stone Jesus. And Jesus said, Why are you stoning me? Why are you trying to stone me? And Jesus said, you No, know, Jesus asked them, said, For which of my works are you trying to stone me? And the Pharisees said, For none of your works are we stoning you. 
we are stoning you because you being a man makes yourself God. Blasphemy. That you are a man, yet you make yourself God. That means they understood what he said. But when you read through the English Bible, when you read through that same chapter, the whole of chapter 10, you wouldn't see anywhere in the English version where Jesus said, I am God. Because the English version did not properly communicate what Jesus said. And that's why I started this video by giving you the Aramaic language. What Jesus actually said in Aramaic language, in plain English. He said, I am God. That's why the Pharisees said, blasphemy, you are a man and you make yourself God. Okay? What you must also understand is that Jesus on earth, okay, was the balance between two dispensations. Okay? I'm sure there's no Christian, same Christian that is going to argue that the Holy Spirit is not God. Holy is not his name. Spirit is not his name. Holy is an attribute of God. Spirit is an attribute of God. The Spirit of God is God himself because John 4, 24 tells us that God is the Spirit. Most versions, only KJV I think says that, most versions say God is Spirit. I have thought that God is not a Spirit. God is the Spirit. God is holy. Even though the Bible won't say, Be ye holy as your Father in heaven is holy. So when you see holy, spirit is still God. Alright? So you must begin to understand that Jesus was the balance, was the middle, or let me say the meeting point, or the transition point from the physical to the spiritual. That is why the, fact, the, the Israelites went through the Red Sea. It was called baptized in the Red Sea. Water. In the upper room, they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. There was no water there in the upper room, right? But Jesus did it too. He was baptized in Jordan. The Holy Spirit came over him, right? So you see that. Of course, when you are shallow, I need to follow me carefully. When you are shallow, want to reason out spiritual things using your logic then it appears to you like the Holy Spirit is different from Jesus and of course if the Holy Spirit is different from Jesus the Holy Spirit must be different from God because the voice was heard from the cloud saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear him. It can't be the Holy Spirit who descended on Jesus that was talking right? So it seems as if you have God the Father different from God the Son, different from God the Holy Spirit. God is one. The Bible said that several. Just like it says, he that is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. Oh, it means the Lord is a spirit. And you know the Lord is Jesus. He is a spirit. I have thought that man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. The body and the soul are possession of the man. The man is a spirit. The way he exists on earth is what makes him have a body. He doesn't stop to be a man, even without his body. That's why God today is a man, though he is the one living in men, in the bodies of men. That's why he says that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He says your body belongs to God and you are one spirit with the Lord who himself is a spirit. So he described that even as a believer, your body is not you. So you don't reason out spiritual things using logic. You don't do that. Okay? You don't do that. Now moving on. The wilderness experience for Israel was 40 years. The wilderness experience for the early church was 40 years, between AD 30 and AD 70. Israel went through physical wilderness. Okay? The early church went through not a physical wilderness. The wilderness was not physical. It was a spiritual one because throughout that wilderness experience, they were open for their promised land, in quote. Okay? As Israel was going to a physical promised land, in a, from a physical wilderness into a physical promised land, the early church was going through 
a spiritual wilderness. Wilderness because the presence of God was with them, was in them, but they had not received the promise of the kingdom. They had not entered into the kingdom yet. Though the kingdom had arrived, they were waiting to enter into it. Jesus was in a physical wilderness, but the temptations he went through were not physical. You thought it was physical stones they were asking him to turn to bread. No. Oh, you thought it was taken in an instant to the highest mountain, physical mountain in the world. And he viewed in an instant the whole kingdoms of the world. Oh, you agree that he was in a physical wilderness because the Bible said he was in a wilderness with the beasts of the field. 40 days and 40 nights. And the temple of Jerusalem is not in the wilderness. So what temple was it taking to the pinnacle of? The temple of Jerusalem? No. So the body of Christ on earth is the temple and he was asked to cast himself down. Instead of being the head, he should cast himself down. And you describe that as the main picture of the church today. Okay, when I talk about the church, I'm talking about denominations. The general overseer, who is a man, is at the top and Jesus is at the bottom. The general overseer should be the leg. He's the one with the message, right? How beautiful are the feet of those that carry the message of the kingdom. But he's at the top now. Whatever he says is final. And you have the Christians in the body who would no longer quote Jesus, but quote their general overseers. It's so sad, okay? So that was what the devil was trying to achieve. He failed with Jesus, he's succeeding with that with some people in religion. Alright? I need to follow me closely. So, if you don't understand that Jesus is the gap in between two, the physical and the spiritual, you misconstrue the fact that when Jesus was here, he was in two offices at the same time. He was in the office of a man, and at the same time, he was in the office of God. That's why at times he speaks like a man, and at times he speaks like God. And so, if you are going to reason the words of Jesus by logic, some of them will make sense. Some of them will confuse the hell out of you. Some of them will make sense. Some of them will make him look as if he's mad, as if he doesn't know what he's saying. Imagine Philip telling him one day, say, you have been talking about the Father, talking about the Father, talking about the Father. Can you just show us the Father for crying out loud? And Jesus said, you mean you have been with me all this while and you don't know me. He didn't say you've been with me all this while you don't know the Father. No, you've been with me all this while and you don't know me. You need to visit that and look at that carefully. Jesus just called himself the Father. And because he was in the office of a son of man and the office of the Son of God, so when he speaks... In, the, in his office as the son of God, as this God himself become man, people confuse him with his statements, with when he speaks like someone in, as a man. When Jesus was to die on the cross, he died as a man. And listen to this. The wrath that Jesus took on the cross was not from God. It was from the law. The wrath was death. The law, sin, and death. Paul said, I was alive without the law once. But when the law came, sin revived and I died. So the process is from law to sin to death. The death is the wrath. And that's what Jesus took on the cross. He died. The wrath was from the law. Now, if you've not listened to my teaching on the fact that it wasn't God who gave the law, it was angels. Then, you listen to some every apostle somewhere who told you and proved with so many scriptures and so many arguments that it was God who gave the law and that God not giving the law means he was not in charge and then you run and follow those stuff. You are going to have confusion with the deity of Jesus because all of the things we teach are interwoven. We don't sound this way here and come here and sound differently. All I have been teaching, you can link everything together and see it as a whole singular scripture saying the same thing. Galatians 3.19 says that angels ordained 
that the law was ordained by angels. The word by is dia, okay? And a lot of people have interpreted dia to be to mean um, um, true. But look at the usage of the word in the strong Greeks dictionary. You discover that the word is primarily by than it is true. So how come true supersedes by? In fact, the, the way it is used like as by, that they did it, they ordained, they instituted, look at the Greek word that they instituted, they put in place, they commanded, they instituted the law. Okay? Angels did that. Okay? The, the word by there is thrice, is used thrice the number of times it is used as true. God didn't give the law. If God gave the law, then God is an hypocrite. Because in the law, he said, do not kill. But you are firm that he kills. So, no one under the old covenant saw God, knew God. What they knew were angels. The only time we saw God was when we saw Jesus. And this is beyond Theophany that he just came to him. John 1 18, Jesus speaking, he said, the only begotten, he said, no man had seen God at any time. So you wonder what Moses saw in Exodus 33 uh, 11. That wasn't God. That was an angel. If you had seen Moses face to face and said, take me to the God of Israel. He will take you straight to the tabernacle and take you into the Holy of Holies. What do you see? Two angels sitting over a coffin. Arun. That's what you call the Ark of Covenant. Are two angels sitting over the coffin. And Jesus was letting you know that the, the position of God taken from between the two angels. That's why when he resurrected, an angel was at the leg, another angel was at the leg at the, at the head, and he stood from their midst and went out. So when they went there, the angels said to them, Why are you looking for the living and is the dead? So you are, you can no longer look for life where death reigns. Okay? So the authority to kill was taken from angels because of what Jesus did. The book of Hebrew is replete with this discussion to show you that God is not angels. They are different. To show you that Jesus is different from angels. To show you that Jesus is supreme to angels. Okay? And to show you that God was not the one under the whole covenant. If you can't interpret properly, you keep pushing up errors like God gave the law. All the killings you see in the Old Testament was not delivered, was not done by God, was done by angels. Oh, can angels act without God's permission? Yes, man, whose actions and authority on earth bats a dismantling, a scattering of the hierarchy that God placed in whatever caused that. Human beings demanded for that and they got that. So you have to understand that Jesus was in two of his at the same time. Okay, it was a man, and at the same time, it was God in the flesh. So we need to understand this. We need to understand that. We need to understand that. So Jesus is God in the flesh. So the argument of who gave the law, it wasn't God, it was angels. And that's why you see the killings everywhere. Moses never saw God. John 1 8, Jesus said, no man had seen God at any time, but the only begotten Son of, the, uh, of God, who is at the bosom of the Father, at declared. That place did not say he's declaring, say at declared him. Yet, this was earlier in Jesus' ministry. John 1 18. Okay? When Jesus was about to leave, he told, he told these same disciples that I have so many things to tell you, but you cannot receive it now. Oh, if it's if declaring by Jesus in one eighteen means teaching, then it would be wrong to say he had declared. That is, the declaration was done. Okay. Okay. Do, do you get that? So for him to say, "I have so many things to tell you," meaning the declaration of teaching was different from the declaration of God's character, though they agree in one. Finally, I think this is John 5. Okay, I'm 
not sure of the scriptures and all. John 5. He said there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said, are, he said these three are one. They are one in the realms of the spirit. On earth, he said there are three that bear witness on earth. Okay? He started by saying the spirit. Okay? The water. The blood. You see the reverse. Father, Son, or Father, the Word, and the Spirit, right? Then it starts by the Spirit, the water. The Word is the water. Of course, you know the Word became flesh. Is Jesus is talking about. And the blood. After, if you've listened to my teaching on reverse principle, everything in the spirit realm is reversed to the earth realm. You should understand what happened. Father, the Word, and the Holy, Holy Spirit, or the Spirit. On earth, the Spirit, the water, which is the Word, and the blood. How does the blood equate to the Father? Because the Father, who is the Spirit, in John 4, 24, was the one who put on flesh on earth. And now has blood because of the sacrifice that he was to do for humanity. So angels, because of man's rebellion to God, gave man something man could not handle. And because man could not handle, angels killed several of them. Most of the times, when angels begin to kill, rightfully so, because that's what man demanded, for man has authority for what happens here. And we give angels authority, knocking God over out of the hierarchy. Angels took over naturally. Angels started doing the killing. God severally will intercept to stop it. You see that in the issue of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? Where God came with two angels as it is to Abraham and started discussing with Abraham and told Abraham, I have heard that there are so much wickedness going and I am going to confirm it. Come on. God is going to confirm. God has heard. I thought he's omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. Man has changed that about relation. God never abandoned man. It was men okay, who abandoned God and so handicapped themselves in a circumstance where although God could reach them, he is a God who obeys principle. He's a God who is just. He doesn't jump on that. He doesn't jump onto God, even if he's the one who said it. He had to stay back. Now he said, I am going there to confirm. Three men left Abraham's house and were going towards Sodom and Gomorrah. Only two arrived. Because in that time, two arriving was all arriving. Angels arriving was God arriving. Man turned that. You have to read spiritual hierarchies as self-sustaining. Then you understand what we're talking about. Alright. So, Jesus is God's answer. When the anger of the law was full and was about to be poured over Israel, God came as a man to take it for them. The same way intercepted when the angel wanted to enter Jerusalem to destroy, you know, everybody, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, David included, he interrupted. This time, he came and took the whole judgment upon himself. That's why you see Jesus saying in John 12, 31, 32, 33, there about, he said, now is the judgment of this world. Now will the prince of this world be cast out and I, if I be lifted up, we draw all unto me. The word men there is in italics, meaning it's not the original. All what? All what was just drawing upon himself and cause all men's judgment. But some say we don't want. We don't want, you know, it's finished work over us. So they got the judgment that they was well deserved in AD 70 destruction. It wasn't God destroying them, it was the law. And the destruction that happened in AD 70 was angels. Yes, the Lord descended with a shout. What was his reason for descending? To construct. And if I would discuss higher theology with you, the Lord that descended was the one who was actually Lord in that era that is passing. Who was Lord under the name of angels? He came to build his kingdom, but something has to be destroyed for something to is coming for his kingdom, the angels have to close their protection now. What's it called now? They are balance their sheets. They have to close their accounts. If I'm to move into a new house or a house, whoever I was occupant of that place has to move out. Okay? So, for the kingdom to be saved, these guys have to close their account. And their work was destruction. So, they 
destroyed them house. They destroyed everybody. There's a man who was in prison. He started a fellowship. So that you understand what happened. He started a fellowship. And people who were condemned, condemned means sentenced to death, with their things on their chest. Once they joined that fellowship, they discovered that they were pardoned. They were being pardoned. It's a life story, something I know. I didn't hear. I know. I know the person. I know one of the benefactors, you know, and go. So, and um, one day, his release came. He was released from that prison. I think about a week after he was released, or two or three weeks, I'm not too sure anymore. The certified court confirmed. He was released. An order came. Every condemned in that prison were all marched out and, and killed at the same time. Executed within us right now at the same time. Why? Because the covering over them had been removed. The grace that they were enjoying because they joined the fellowship had been removed. I don't know if you are getting that. So, when the grace time period over Israel was removed, the AD 70, when the 70 weeks of Daniel was completed, and they were now ripe enough for destruction, the destruction came. So, I need you to understand that what Jesus came to do was God in the flesh coming to take the destruction that was duly deserved. Israel was heading towards destruction. Okay? So it's not God who destroyed them. Just like it is not God that in the mainstream theology sends people to hell. Humanity were already heading towards hell before he came to rescue them. So if we project what I just told you rightly as the AD 70 event, if we project into the futuristic doctrine, it's going to cover that God is exonerated. Jesus.